I think that um, I would first of all say that uh, that's a real crucial thing because if you don't have a vision for your church or hope for your church, then it's going to be difficult to see the church move forward. So um, I would say you need to get some rest. You need to get away from the church and give yourself some space and time uh, to think without being at the church building. Uh, so I always recommend that you go away for a retreat or get away, like going to a library on a weekly basis. Uh, something that gives you a break from the church where you can really think without having the pressures of the church. And sometimes the uh, uh, aspects uh, of the church that might be depressing, uh, like maybe dilapidated uh, carpet or something like that, that always stares you in the face. Hard to dream in those situations. So I think you, number one, you get rest because you can't dream if you're tired. Uh, they should probably study Elisha after his battle at Mount Carmel because he was tired. He had the rest he had to eat uh, before God gave him courage and the ability to see the future again. And I think a lot of pastors need that break uh, to, to, to dream. But I would say to pastors, if you, uh, if you rest and you get away from the church and you think about the future and, and God doesn't give you a passion and dream for that particular church for the future, then that's probably a sign. It's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. And to go to another ministry or church where you do have a vision and a dream. Obviously, I think uh, lay people, number one, need to pray for their pastors, uh, pray positively for their pastors. But I think they also, in some practical ways, need to encourage their pastor to have time off to dream. What I always recommend to uh, churches is that uh, every time there's a fifth Sunday in a month, that they let the pastor have that Sunday off. And that actually happens four times a year. Uh, once every 13 weeks, there will be one month with five Sundays. Let the pastor have that Sunday off as a uh, planning and retreat week. And then encourage your pastor to get away from the church and to dream and think about the future of the church. So once a quarter, you would be giving them basically a, a, a week off to dream and plan and to think and to rest. And I found that to be a very positive thing. Another thing would be uh, to allow your pastor to have a sabbatical. And what I'm finding in uh, the United States is that churches now are letting their pastors have an actual sabbatical leave every six years. And it's usually for two months. And that's over and above their normal vacation time. They actually get uh, an extra two months off as a sabbatical. I think it really begins right away. I think that um, you use the honeymoon period, the first year or so, to really begin to preach and teach about your hopes and dreams for that congregation and for the future. Uh, you may not be able to outline a very specific vision in terms of steps of what we're going to do in the first year, but I think in general you, tar you start preaching and teaching and conversing with people about, you know, that God is a uh, great God, he's done great things for our church in the past, he still wants to do great things in the future, and we're going to move forward. And you start casting that kind of a conversation uh, to the people right away. And then during the first year, you ask a lot of questions, you find out, you know, what the needs are in the community, what the passions of the people are, what the gifting of the people are, and you formulate uh, a more specific vision probably towards the end of the first year that you begin sharing in the second year. We do. All they have to go to is www.churchgrowthnetwork.com. Church Growth Network would be, all be one word, okay. .com. There's free resources there. There's uh, a blog there, uh, a lot of free articles and things like that that people could uh, find helpful, I'm sure.